Tonight, Hollywood is the scene of a gala event unusual even for Hollywood. The world premiere of Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Rarely has Hollywood been so agog over the opening of a motion picture. The town's been talking about it for months. Practically the entire movie colony will be at the opening tonight, and you're going along too. So we take you to the Carthay Circle Theater for the premiere of Walt Disney's full-length Technicolor production, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. We take you now to the Carthay Circle Theater. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is Don Wilson speaking, and we're standing right now outside the Carthay Circle Theater here in Hollywood, California. Among the glamorous stars and the foremost executives of filmdom are assembling here to pay tribute to Walt Disney. Tonight, the cartoonist, creator of Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and a host of other beloved characters the world over, passes another milestone in his amazing career. He's showing his first full-length feature animated motion picture, the first one that's ever been made, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Walt will speak to us himself a little later in our program on the air when he puts in an appearance here at the theater. And we'll bring you many other celebrities to the microphone as they arrive. Meanwhile, I'm going to try to give you just a semblance of an idea of our surroundings here. You know, as you can well tell by the background, the gaiety is the keynote. Under this bright starlit night, people are laughing and smiling as they walk down the blue carpeted aisle to the theater entrance. This aisle is lined with, by hundreds and hundreds of people, some standing, some sitting in the special stands that have been provided for them. Many of them have been here for hours awaiting this stupendous occasion. They've all heard reports that have filled Hollywood since uh, Snow White uh, was sneak previewed last week that this full-length feature is the most entertaining and exciting movie Walt Disney has ever made, and that's saying a great deal. We're standing in a glare of floodlights around the theater. The searchlight beams are waving across the sky. And at my left is a box office. There is no public sale of tickets for tonight's performance. Of course, the house has been sold out for many, many days. A long line of patrons is at the advance window making reservations for later in the run. At my right, a canopy stretches to the street. The whole atmosphere around here is fantastic, almost unreal tonight. It is though everyone had caught a little of the spirit of the old, old fairy tale that they're going to see portrayed on the screen. You know, I've never seen a premiere as gay and as merry as this one. Everyone in town is turning out to have the first look at Walt Disney's brand new characters. It's quite an event, the premiere of a motion picture that hasn't a single flesh and blood character in it. I hear that this beautiful story, as Walt Disney treats it in Technicolor, is going to make motion picture history. That it is as significant as the introduction of sound. That it opens up an entirely new form of storytelling. And that's why Blase Hollywood is here, and that's why the theater is sold out. Everyone wants to be on hand for this big, happy, important event. Right beside me on the bandstand is the orchestra that has been playing for us as we opened our air show, the same orchestra that recorded the score for the picture. And for tonight, the orchestra is being directed by Mr. Manny Harmon. We have all the orchestrations for, from the picture, Snow White herself, the prince, the seven singing dwarfs are on hand to sing the numbers for you. We'll start a little music right now, and we, we know that you won't mind if we interrupt you from time to time so that we may present many of Hollywood's leading figures that are coming to the theater tonight and have them say a word to you as they drive up and then go on into the theater. We'll interrupt, as we said a moment ago, from time to time. But first now, let's hear one of the cutest songs in the entire picture. Snow White and the animals, you know, in the story, are dusting the dwarf's cottage. As they work, they sing a lilting, whistling tune which opens with one song and is followed by Whistle While You Work. All right, boys.
the elevated platform from which we're speaking is right alongside a runway that leads from the edge of the sidewalk right into the theater entrance. And while I've been standing here, more stars have gone by than uh, there are in the heavens, I do believe. And there are a gang of them right here on the platform. We're going to bring them to you just as fast as we can. First, I would like to introduce Mr. Leo Spitz, the president of RKO Radio Pictures. Mr. Spitz. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. All Hollywood seems to be gathered here to do honor to Snow White and the creator of that great achievement, Mr. Walt Disney. RKO is proud to be associated in this venture and to have the opportunity to afford people throughout the world the chance of seeing Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I have seen this picture and I can truthfully say it is a thing of beauty and will be a joy forever to millions of people. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jesse L. Lasky, a veteran of the film industry who made history with the covered wagon, the Ten Commandments, and a good many others. Jesse L. Lasky. <coughs> good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Who says there is no Santa Claus? It seems to me that Walt Disney tonight, in giving this wonderful feature to the children of the world, is indeed a modern Santa Claus. And to Walt Disney and his, and his associates, I wish everything that their great picture deserves. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lasky. And uh, here's a gentleman I'm sure you all know. And that is Freeman Gosden, or Amos, of Amos and Andy. Gos, come on over, will you? How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? We had just come here tonight to pay respects to one of the finest fellas we've met in California and a fella who has developed a great picture. I see my partner over there, Andy. Hey, Andy, come here a minute, will you? What are you doing standing over there? Come here. There you come and walk in. Say hello to the people. Well, hello, folks. This is, how is you? Glad to see you, folks. See you again. Virginia, you ain't never spoke on that. Say hello. These are my friends. Say hello to them. Hello, Daddy. Friends, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Freeman, how about you saying hello to Let's my turn friends? Turn around here and we can get right in the picture. Merry Christmas, Daddy's friends. That's very good. You go on there, too. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, boys. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is Bazooka Bob Burns. Well, folks, I, I just want to tell you, I didn't come out here tonight to see all these stars that you've been hearing about for so long. I came here to see the stars of all stars. That's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And the reason I came tonight is just because I couldn't wait any longer to see the picture. And I know it's going to be the nicest Christmas present I'll have is being able to see such a wonderful picture. Thank you very much. Okay, Bob. Oh, I didn't Thank see you. <laughs> okay, right here. And here's a gentleman. Uh, he doesn't play a bazooka, but if Donald Duck were here, he might take him on. Joe Penner and his duck. <laughs> uh, uh, good evening. <laughs> Bob Burns to give me the double take there, but really, <laughs> I am very happy to be here tonight, and I know I'm going to enjoy this picture, and really, I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Go ahead. Have a picture taken, Joe. Right alongside the mic. <laughs> Miss Helen Vinson and Mr. Fred Perry. All right. Dwarfs, will you let them through here, please? Miss Helen Vinson, will you say a word? Ever since I was five years old, I've been waiting for the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs to come true. Thank you, Mr. Disney, and uh, Merry Christmas to all the Mickey Mouse fans, which I'm sure must include everybody in the world. And Mr. Fred Perry, yes, just a word, will you? Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's a long time since I saw uh, my fables, but uh, I'm looking forward to a grand evening, and thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And Mr. George McCall, one of Hollywood's top commentators. Mr. McCall. I only hope that you could all see this picture this evening. I know I'm going to enjoy it very much. And now we're going to take you back to Don Wilson and the orchestra for just a moment while we hear some of the music from this swell show. Snow White. All right, Don. Ladies and gentlemen, while we're uh, getting ready back here to play a little music for you, another tune from the picture Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. We have a 
seen here the music depicting the cute little animals of the forest with a smile and a song. It's to be sung for us tonight by Snow White herself. This is one of the highlights of the entire picture, this lovely song. Mr. Chaplin, will you say a word? Charles Chaplin, ladies and gentlemen. How do you do, everybody? Thank you, sir. And now, here's, uh, here's a gentleman that I'm sure you all want to meet. It's Walt Disney, the creator of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And he's just arrived. Mr. Disney, will you come up, please? Well, I'm very happy about everything. Well, Walt, I, I think you're due to do all the talking tonight. Uh, tell us a little bit about this picture, will you? Well, uh, it's been a lot of fun making it. And we're very happy that it's being given this big premiere here tonight, and all these people are turning out to, to take a look at it, and I hope they're not too disappointed. Well, I'm sure they won't be. I've seen the picture, Walt, and you're to be congratulated. Now, can you tell us something about uh, some of the characters in the picture, particularly uh, Snow White and possibly the Seven Dwarfs? What about them? Well, our favorites are the little dwarfs. There's seven of them. We've uh, got names for them all that sort of fit their personality, such as uh, Doc, who's the pompous leader. And then there's uh, old uh, Happy, the uh, smiling little fellow. Yeah. And uh, Grumpy, the old sourpuss, the woman hater. Yeah. And I can't remember them all here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, little about, Dopey. Yeah, what about Dopey? Well, he's uh, he's sort of our pet, you know. We, oh, is that so? Yeah. Well, what are uh, what are some of his uh, lines in the picture? Some of his funny lines, for instance. Well, he hasn't any lines. He doesn't talk. Well, he do why why not, uh, Walt? Well, I don't know. I guess he just never tried. <laughs> well, that's as good a reason as any. Are you going in to uh, to watch the preview yourself now, Walt? Yes. Uh huh. And have my wife hold my hand. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. Good luck to you. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the time. And now back to just a moment. Now back to Don Wilson and a bit from the orchestra again. Well, just before we hear, hear a little music, I know that here's someone you're going to enjoy a great, great deal. Those internationally famous Walt Disney characters, Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, not to mention Pluto the Pup. So come on over here to the microphone, will you all? Gather around, let's hear from you. What do you have to say? Oh, be quiet, Snow. Mickey wants to say something. Hello, everybody. Gosh, what a night. I'm so excited, I, I can't say a thing. <laughs> Well, now, how do you like coming to big premieres like this, Mickey? Oh, I like it fine. Me too. Oh, woo, 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 woo. oh woo, Mickey, woo. do you uh, do you wish you were in the picture? Uh, not me. I need a rest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, need we tell you that Donald Duck is crotchety as ever? Now, what seems to be the trouble tonight, Donald? <laughs> well, I think we can get you into the theater all right. Uh, you want to say something to the folks here now? <laughs> Goodbye, Mickey, Minnie, and Donald. Thank you very, very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Gail Patrick. 
How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I don't think anyone could have chosen a nicer Christmas present than Mr. Disney's chosen for all of us tonight. I'm looking forward to it very eagerly. Thanks a lot. In the meantime, Minnie and Mickey Mouse have been uh, standing around having the pictures taken. Donald Duck has come in and almost broke up the entire proceeding. And now, Don, uh, supposing you tell them a little bit about the uh, island that uh, leads out between here and uh, Wilshire Boulevard. Something about the arrangements that have been made out there, the little house that's on the island, and uh, all of the seven dwarfs who are occupying the house. Supposing you tell them about that, Don, will you? Well, uh, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, dwarf land was moved to Hollywood. Down at the corner of Wilshire Boulevard, just outside the Carthay Circle Theater, Walt Disney built a replica of the dwarf's cottage that appears in this picture, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The cottage is only 10 feet high and not quite so wide, so I had a little bit of difficulty trying to get inside, but every kid in this here now town's been through it, believe me. Outside are giant mushrooms, three feet tall, painted yellow and blue and pink, and then there are weird-looking trees with eyes that light up and long arms that reach out and grab at you just the way they grab at Snow White in the picture. Then there's a little dwarf's mill wheel there and a diamond mine sparkling in the spotlights that illuminate the entire scene. Then there's a dwarf's garden that stretches for about two blocks, I believe. It's, it's filled with all sorts of strange-looking statuary, not to mention stumps and toadstools and flowers by the hundreds and hundreds. A stream flows through the garden that turns the mill wheel, of course, and the crowds stand around watching the antics of the seven little dwarfs, actual dwarfs, too, in quaint medieval fairy tale costumes who are working the diamond mine and raking the garden and running in and out of the house, putting on a great show and singing and dancing for the children and grown-ups alike. But uh, going back now to a little bit more of our music from uh, the picture Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, one of the biggest hits of the entire picture is a love song that we're going to hear next, and the title of it is One Song. We're going to change the routine a little bit here, are we? Oh, the washing song. All oh, that has to do, of course, with the Seven Dwarfs at, and uh, uh, Snow White as she cleans up uh, prior to the Seven Dwarfs coming into the village. All right, maestro, strike it off. The washing song. gentleman, I think, can tell us uh, something about the picture, or at least he can tell us something that he's looking forward to in the picture. The well-known columnist, picture columnist, Jimmy Starr. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very glad to be here this evening. I can't tell you anything about the picture. I haven't seen it as yet, and I, all I can say is that I'm awfully glad you're not here tonight because there are too many people here already. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Back to the music. Now, here's someone, ladies and gentlemen, that I know you'll be interested in hearing from. The supervising director of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Walt Disney's right-hand man, the general manager of the Disney Studios, Mr. Dave Hand. Dave, can you tell us something about this amazing picture that you've made, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, please? Yes, Don, I'll be glad to. You know, when I visited your studio just last week, I was quite a good deal astonished by the unbelievable amount of technical detail required for this animated feature production. I'm wondering, and I'm sure that many of our listeners are wondering, how on earth you managed to uh, complete such a glorious picture? We wonder ourselves. At times, it appeared to be an almost impossible task. Ever since starting it three years ago, it has seemed too, far too big an undertaking for any organization to accomplish. We have been working 24-hour shifts in order to meet this date. The fact that we did it is a tribute to the guiding genius of Walt and the wholehearted efforts and perfect cooperation of the 700 artists and technicians of the studio staff. Well, now, I suppose you just sit back and sort of take things easy a while, would you? No, not quite. We've started something that must be carried on. The tremendous amount of experimentation necessary on this production has only increased our desire to do really great things we find that we have only scratched the surface of the wonderful possibilities of the full-length animated feature. We have recently started two new feature-length cartoons into production, 
the first to be released a year from now, and the second the following fall. <laughs> well, Dave, haven't you given yourself a pretty tough assignment, starting two more features simultaneously? Yes, Don, we have. But our staff thrives on tough assignments, and we are going ahead anticipating many interesting problems. We are hoping to produce things far above anything imaginable at the present time. Well, thank you, Dave Hand. A great deal. Congratulations on this picture and greater success on those to follow. We're very grateful to you indeed for coming up and giving us a sidelight on your future plans. Musicians who have listened to the musical score of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs say that the biggest song hit of the entire picture, as we started to indicate a moment ago, is one that we're going to hear now. It is titled One Song, and it's sung for you by the Prince just as he sings it in, uh, to Snow White in the picture. One Song, sung by the Prince. One song, I have but one song, one song only for you. One heart tenderly beating, ever entreating, constant and lovely song, Prince. Thank you. Snow White is a lovely girl, but preview audiences out Hollywood way say that the picture is stolen by those comical little seven dwarfs, the funniest characters Walt Disney has ever created. Not the least of their amusing charm comes from their musical numbers. We'll now hear them sing a couple of the jolly tunes. One is Dig, Dig, Dig from the Diamond Mine sequence, and the other High Ho, their catchy little marching song. Dig, 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 and High Ho. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ed Sullivan, the well-known columnist. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're all looking very eagerly toward this premiere tonight. Because in all the history of Walt Disney, he's never done anything bad, and we imagine that this million-dollar, million five hundred thousand dollar epic will mark really something significant in Hollywood history. Thank you very much. My home, my home, it's home to work we go. the crowd has streamed into the theater, ladies and gentlemen. The curtains are about to part on the world premiere of Walt Disney's first full-length feature production, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in Technicolor. While the audience in the Carthay Circle Theater in Hollywood prepares to enjoy this great motion picture, we'll bring us some more of its lovely music. And here's an interesting young lady, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Haynes, the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Robert Haynes of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And I understand that you flew all the way out here from Winston-Salem just to see Snow White. Is that a fact? Yes, sir. And uh, you are from the South. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, when did you arrive? We got here uh, Monday morning. And when do you expect to leave? Probably the night of the first. Night of the first. And you came out here especially to see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yes, sir. I know you're going to enjoy the picture. Thanks for I coming. I know I will. Thank you.
Then you will remember as the story progresses, the prince arrives at the dwarf's cottage and finds Snow White in a glass coffin, lying as if dead, with the dwarf's mourning at her side. The prince kisses her lips, her eyes open, the prince picks her up in his arms, and as the little dwarfs rejoice, carries her off to his castle, where they live happily ever after. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is Preston Foster, who did such a swell job in First Lady. Mr. Foster. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I understand this picture is a huge success, and I hope it is. But just imagine if they made them all this way. And here's Sally Eilers. Miss Eilers, will you say a word, please? Good evening, everybody. I'm very happy to be here. motion pictures. Luella Parsons. One thing I do know is that this picture tonight is the best Christmas present the children of Hollywood can possibly have. Well, as we indicated a few moments ago, there are just a uh, few of the stragglers, the late arrivers coming now. The crowds, as you might well know, applaud their favorites as they come from their beautiful, glorious limousines down the canopy, the blue carpet, into the theater. While the crowd is just hanging on, hopefully waiting for the last one to arrive, let us listen to a little more of this glorious music from the score of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I think we have time for it, Maestro. Raise the time. gentlemen, we've just about come to the end of our broadcast portion of the ceremonies attendant to the premiere of Walt Disney's glorious new animated cartoon, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. We hope that you've all enjoyed our broadcast, have gotten some conception of the glorious music, a few of the pertinent comments of the people that have gone before us. Don Wilson speaking, bidding you good night for Buddy Twist, and this is the National Broadcasting Company.